Okay, we can start with Max Munsey. Uh, we have mics on both sides. Who wants to start? With first question for Max. Start with David standing up on the right in the back. Hi, Max. David. You guys have been in this position a few different times over the course of the time you've been here. How, how important is it and what's being said inside that clubhouse? You know, I think the most important message we could spread is uh, it, it's over. Uh, you know, the other night was just one game. Um, you don't win or lose the series in one game until it's the winner take all. So, you know, for us, obviously it was a you know really bad game and it sucked and it wasn't very fun being out there. But at the same time, it doesn't matter how many runs they score. It's only one one loss or one win. So for us, it's uh, it's over. We have uh, it's a it's a zero zero game today. Everyone's starting fresh, and you know that's how it's going to be every game from here on out. You just take you take. The day you have in front of you, that's all you can do. You don't, you don't worry about what's, what's already happened. You don't worry about what you think is going to happen. All you can do is worry about what you have right in front of you. And so for us, that's today's game. Uh, we have Zach Gallon on the mound. We're going to go out there and try to execute our game plan. And you know, that's really all there is to it. Thank you, Muncie. David. Jack on the left side. <laughs> Max, is it a, after a game like the other night, is it helpful to have the off day to kind of regroup? Is it tougher to, to sit on that for an extra 24 hours? And what was yesterday like just getting ready for this one? Uh, you know, I don't know if I have a good answer to that question. I know, but uh, you know, the whole team came out yesterday. We had a good workout. You know, it was an optional thing, and yet everybody was here. Um, you know, that's that's where everyone's at with that. We knew it was important to, after having the five days off, to make sure we keep getting out and doing stuff. And so, you know, we had a good workout yesterday. Everybody's uh, attitude was good, and you know, like I said, it's the the game before it already happened. It's over and done with. You can't dwell on it. You know, you just got to make sure you move forward. And we have, we have today's game ahead of us. We have a good opportunity to go out there and uh, you know just execute execute what we can execute, and that's uh, what we're focused on. What allowed you guys to be as good against Gallon this year as you were the couple times you faced him, and how much does some of that translate into when you're game planning for tonight? You know, it's. It's the same thing that we try to take against any pitcher. Um, you know, Zach Gallon's one of the best in the game. There's no doubt about that. But if you can, you know, stick to your game plan, not let him deviate you from your game plan, uh, stick to your approach, you know, stick to what you're trying to do as a whole team, if you can do that, you have to trust that, uh, you know, you have the right guys in the lineup and the right guys out there to, to good things will happen as long as you don't deviate from what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of his job on the other side is to, to get us out of our game plan, get us out of our approach. And, you know, it's kind of who wins that battle, really. Mike, over here on the right. Hey, Max, um, why do you think these underdog teams like the D-backs are so dangerous this time of year? <sighs> I, I don't like using underdog or favorite or any of that when you get to the postseason. You know, there's there's 30 teams out there. And yet, there's only a handful that make it to the postseason. So, in my mind, once you're in the postseason, every team is as good as any other team. And in terms of on paper, that doesn't matter. Um, you see it every year. It's not necessarily always the best team that's, that wins. It's the, uh, it's the team that plays the best that uh, goes out there and, and performs, or the team that gets the hottest. And really, that's all that matters. Is so it doesn't matter if you're an underdog or a favorite. You got to go out there and play the game. And you got to make sure you, you, know, you get the big hits when you need them. You make the plays when you need them. Make the pitches when you need them. And that's really all it comes down to. Back left, standing up. Max, uh, Merrill Kelly said the other day that he attacked you guys differently than he had in the past. When you're so familiar with a pitcher, how noticeably different is it the way they attack you regular season compared to postseason? It was definitely different. Um, f on our side, it's hard to tell if that was on purpose or just a circumstance of the game, of them having you know six, seven runs already on the board. Uh, you know, it's... That, that's one of those things where it's it was, it was hard to tell for us, but it was def we definitely noticed he was attacking us different. His stuff was different. You know, he was throwing three, four miles an hour harder than he'd thrown his last three, four times out against us, and everything was sharp. He was hitting all of his spots. It was a uh, it was actually a really impressive outing. Um, you know, if you kind of take a step back and look at it, what he was doing. So for us, it's just uh, you know, you you take it for what it was. He pitched good, and uh, they kind of dominated us, but that game's over with, like I've been saying. So, you know, we get, we get to go out there and focus on tonight. Down here in the front row. Max, uh, the top seeds are, are one and five so far. I know you can't change what has happened, but in general, do you, would you rather play right away or, or wait like you guys did and why? Uh, I, I can't answer that without having done the other one. So, you know, for us, this is the second year that we've had this format. We've been off both times. Uh, I don't know what it's like on the other side. Um, so I can't really answer that question fairly. Uh, you know, 
I, I could say that, yeah, we'd rather be playing right away or not. But the reality is, if if you have the days off, you're uh, you're one of the top seeds and you have home field advantage. And you know, really, when you think about it, that's the most important thing. But I can't give you a fair answer because we haven't done the other side. Max, uh, over here. Um, I'm curious, you, you were a young player coming up in the game and played in the postseason. When you look at a guy like Bobby Miller, how do you know that you're ready for a big stage like this? You just have to trust in what you've been doing all year long. Um, you know, for us, I, the Dodgers, I've always said it's a little bit different. You get to play at Dodger Stadium in front of 50,000 people every single night. Um, you know, for us, we... The atmosphere is always different in the playoffs, but for us, you have a full stadium usually when we're playing here. And uh, for a lot of people, that's one of the biggest adjustments. You play the regular season, you you might have just a couple of games here and there where you have a sold out stadium, whereas we're doing it almost every single night. And so for Bobby, he's just got to realize it's still the same game. Um, stakes are a little bit higher, obviously, but he, he's he got to go out there and, and do what he's been doing all year. Just execute what, he, what his pitches, execute his game plan. Um, you know, not not let the moment get too big, which is always easier said than done. But uh, you know, for him, I think he's as ready as he's going to get. He, I think we're all excited to see what he can do. Second row. Piggyback off of that. Excuse me. What what do you remember your feelings when your playoff debut? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I. You know, as many playoff games as I've played in, I still get nervous before every single one of them. You know, it's just. Uh, um, but to me, I think that's a good thing. That's. Uh, that's telling me that I'm not, you know, I'm not above the moment. And none of us are above the moment. And, you know, it's it's an exciting it's an exciting game. And the postseason is why you you play this game. You know, you're obviously here to, to win a World Series and that's the whole goal. And getting to do it on a yearly basis with the Dodgers is always you know, is always something that I don't take for granted. But yeah, you still get you still get nervous and I still remember I was a wreck before my first one. No doubt about that. Fabian here on the right. Yeah, Max, so just to go back to Bobby, where have you sort of seen him grow and evolve just as over the course of his rookie season, uh, just sort of watching from their base? I think he's he's learning who he is. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing for young pitchers, um, regardless of who you are. When you're pitching in the minor leagues compared to pitching at the big league level, it's going to be completely different. Your stuff isn't always going to necessarily translate. And so for him, I think it's just learning who he was throughout the course of a year. And, you know, he – he, he became very, very good, and he was very fun to watch. And just watching each game, how his stuff changed and how he used his stuff differently was, uh, you know, just a true sign of growth to me. And uh, he's, he's, he's buying into that. He's not trying to be stubborn with, oh, I throw 100 miles an hour. That's all I need to do. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's grown a lot learning that he can use other stuff to make that fastball even better. Jack, on the left. Going back to what you said about Merrill, kind of mixing up, his looks against you guys the other night. It seems like that's something that comes up a lot with the way teams attack you guys in the postseason the last couple of years. Do you almost anticipate that teams are going to do that now, throw you a different look than what you see in the regular season? And how big of an adjustment is that as you guys try to prepare for some of these, these pitching matchups? You can't assume anything that any team is going to do. Um, you know, we've obviously had a little trouble with that in the past, uh, you know, looking at the Braves specifically. Um, you know, you face them in the regular season, they pitch you a certain way, and then they flip the script when they get to the postseason. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to do in theory, but at the same time, your pitchers go an entire year pitching to a certain plan. That's just how they attack. But, uh, you know, you, you would have to assume that when you get in the postseason, most teams are going to go to their strengths, but that's not always the case. And so, you know, it's, you just got to gotta adjust with the game. And, uh, you know, you got to make sure your game plan can, adjust, can, can be adjustable with the game. You can't just be set in stone. Otherwise, it's... Not going to be a good good outcome. Any last ones for Max? <clears throat> Barry. Thanks, Mark. Uh Back to the the playoff format. Just from th your point of view, when you have three teams last year, three out of four 100 win teams all were eliminated early. This year, 99 team Tampa is gone. The other teams, 100 win teams, have all been struggling. Do you feel that it's a disincentive at this point to play that well during the regular season and wind up in this predicament in the playoffs? No, I don't. Um, that goes back to what I was saying earlier, that the best team on paper doesn't win in this game. Um, throughout the course of a year, that might be the case. But in the playoffs, it's the team that plays the best and the team that gets the hottest and the team that executes their game plan the best. 
And that's one of the wonderful things about the postseason. It's, uh, um, you know, I think back to 2018 for us, we were clearly not the best team in that playoff, but yet we made it to the World Series because we executed what we needed to do. And uh, every year, that's that's what you see. The teams that are win, winning are the teams that, you know, they get hot, they have guys get big hits in the right moments, and, you know, it's it's not always the best players that are getting those hits. That's the beauty of the postseason. And uh, it's also just the beauty of this game in general. It's, you, you know, we have Freddie and Mookie, obviously, but it might come down to someone someone else. You know, you might look at a David Peralta or an Austin Barnes to get a huge hit in a big moment, and that's what's going to change the game, you know. So to me, it's – I don't think it's a disincentive. I think it's just you got to get hot at the right time, and that's really all the postseason is about. And really what you're saying is every team can beat any other team even during the regular season. So the gap between an 84-win team and a 100-win team is not that big. This is, this is Major League Baseball. These are the best players in the world. You know, you don't, you, you don't play Major League Baseball because you're a bad player. Like, that, that's, just, that's just not how it works. Um, I know teams see a team like the Oakland Athletics this year and say, oh, that's a bunch of bad players. That's not true. They're still some of the best players in the world. And so, you know, on any given night, any one of those players can be the best player in baseball for that night. And that's what it comes down to.